Studio. Check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Rocking the mind, body, and soul. Energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. Cowboys is we are having a funeral procession right now today right here on this show for the Dallas Cowboys and their faithful as I promised you if the Cowboys lost I would go ham and I told you that they would lose unfortunately I didn't even think that they were going to lose yesterday hat what's I didn't up either, you're in the house with me I, First, I'm here big ups to Dr. Dan as Dr. Dan believed that Green Bay was going to beat the Cowboys. He went on record yesterday during the show, talked about it. Gang, that being said, absolutely incredible game, though. Oh, that was the that was a, a monster game, Dream. I had a really good time watching that, man. And uh, you know what? We, You and I thought that the Cowboys were going to get it done. And, and surprising, to our surprise and to the entire Cowboys nation, it did not come to form. That defense gave up there, brother. Gave up the all that was, scoring. The defense was absolutely atrocious uh, yesterday. But what I think the bigger story is about the game, Dallas did not play. They let the page this Patriots. They let the Packers take them out of their game. They did not play the game that they had played for most of the season. I don't know if it was the layoff. I don't know what happened. It looked like they panicked. Once Green Bay scored, and at the ease that Green Bay had went down the field, and they came seriously unriveted and did a lot of things in the beginning of this game that we really didn't see a lot out of Dallas for most of the season. I think they put Dak Prescott in some situations where they asked him to throw the balls and make some throws that I don't necessarily know he was comfortable with at that point in the game. As the game went on, he seemed to get a lot more comfortable, but... I think, one, the week off. Yep. Two, you know, Green Bay came in and kind of just did what Green Bay does, which is which was impressive. Uh, three, they were not able to establish their running game right out of the gate and, and control that clock and take control of the game, like I said. And I think that all added to the psyche and threw things off for them. I think a little bit of panic set in. I also think, like I said, Dak Prescott got in situations where he had to use his arm more than, you know, use Ezekiel Elliott's running. Yep. And it bit him. Sure did, man. And you know what, Dream? The fact that Green Bay was able to run the ball successfully, that made them super dangerous going up and down the field like it was like a hot knife through butter. Dude, it was crazy because me and you, you know, we were sitting at the bar yesterday, and Hat and I were at the bar yesterday watching this game, and of course... There was a bajillion <laughs> Dallas fans there. Yes. And we started off nice and easy, but you know how I get, because I start, because, you know, because this is the thing, and, and uh, Dallas, like, I know y'all want to be like, oh, come on, dude. Nah. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because the problem with Dallas is everything is so over exaggerated with y'all. Okay? That's the problem. You go to a game, you got Dallas fans at the game with you. 
after every, Dallas Dallas calls a timeout, they're clapping. Yeah, right. <laughs> they got a they got a first down. And you know what? I, I love Zeke doing the the feed me thing after a first down when they're down like twenty to down twenty one three. And Zeke's doing the feed me. I mean, that's just uh, uh, you know and that that right there in essence, not Zeke so much, but I'm just saying the Dallas fans with the cheering and the bravado after everything their team does. Just wears at you. You know, you're sitting trying to watch a game. It's like, come on, dude. Right, like, celebrate if you get a touchdown. Celebrate if it's a great catch. First down? Come on, man. It was 32. Right on. Even even penalties, Dream. Like, like false penalty. starts for Green Bay, they're going crazy. <laughs> and this is the thing that drives you crazy. Not to mention just the pure cockiness, the pompousness, the ego. You know, we were sitting there yesterday and I I made, you know, I made some jokes about how quiet it was and and, and then out of the Dallas camp comes, oh, it's quiet because we're about to score. Oh, it's quiet because it should be quiet this time. And I'm like, hey, you guys have never been in this situation. Oh, we're going to come back and win at the end. I'm like, you've never been in this situation all game, you all season. You should fall back. It's just the pompousness and the arrogance just Kept coming, kept coming. And then, God forbid, in the second half, when Dallas started mounting the comeback. Yeah, right. Okay, because then it's an eruption. Right? <laughs> Everybody is erupting all over the place. Everybody's mad, excited. Everybody's going crazy. Uh, and, and oh, what happened now? What happened now? And it's like, if you watch the second half of this game, the second half of the game was played the way I expected, and I think had expected, the first half to right. be played. Right, right. Because in the second half, Dallas did establish their run game. They did move, control the clock. They did move the ball like they were supposed to. But unfortunately, they had already spotted Green Bay quite a, a little bit of a lead. <laughs> 21 points to be exact. And you know what, too? I mean, <clears throat> just watching that game unfold, Aaron Rodgers' dream. God, I, I, who, who would you rather take, him or Brady at this point? I like Aaron Rodgers better than Brady. Well, I like Aaron Rodgers because he's – mobile you know i've yeah. always said i like aaron Rodgers because he's mobile you know and, that, and that's always been a, a thing with me anytime you can have a little bit more ability because it's going to get him out of situations when there's coverage down the field but i mean come on it is tom brady you can't knock the goal i mean tom brady i don't care what nobody i mean they're both hall of fame quarterbacks but tom brady's resume come oh, on yeah dude, big time big time well you know what the green bay packers are still alive and they got to go to atlanta this week coming up which we'll talk about when we go on after we break down the two games but you know what i i've never been a huge fan of mccarthy's play calling but green bay the play calling was outstanding yesterday dream you, you know, know the bootlegs the, 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 the quarterback draws stuff like that they were great quarterback draw was dope i'll give you that yeah they were great man Quarterback draw was dope, but I just, man, listen, I knew Dallas' defense was bad. I talked about it that Monday night. I was on Twitter going back and forth with Cats that yeah. Monday night. You know, what I saw the, the Detroit Lions doing to them. I did not think the Dallas Cowboys defense was going to be that bad. Well, a lot of a lot of Cowboy fans actually said that to me, um, that they, they were a little bit concerned about the defense. And sure enough, I mean, the defense was gassed. Dude. And you know what, too? They, you know... They can't make substitutions. Uh, Aaron Rodgers was picking off that, you know, 12 men on the field thing the whole game. He was going after that. And, you know, it was forcing them into bad situations and timeouts and all all the dream. They were just a mess. You know, one other thing that, that Green Bay did, and I don't know if you were if you were aware of it, but the one thing I noticed Green Bay also did, they didn't run kickoffs out of their end zone. Yep. They stayed, took the knee, got the 25. In fact, the one time that they did screw that yeah, right. up they had the bad field position and ended up going three and out but outside of that they never ran and i i'm telling you i've always been one i've said it for most of this season and i don't care that some guys can run them back and whatever whatever oh cool if you catch that ball in the end zone take the damn knee i agree especially that they put it on the 25 now that's what i that's what if i'm a coach I'm telling my guy, if you catch the ball in the end zone, take a knee. I don't care if you're at the very edge of the end zone going out. Take the knee. Let's go to the 25 because I think statistically you're stopped more before the 25 than you are past it, taking it out. Unless you're down big, then you take a shot. You know well, what I'm saying? if you're down big, yeah. I mean, if you're down big, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Right. So, that's, yeah, that's no, right. Of course. Shot. If you're down big, it doesn't matter. But, uh. Dude, I just, you know, I, I, part of me obviously is having a lot of fun with this. Is I, I'm having a lot of fun with the Cowboy fans. 
the flip side to this, I mean, heartbreaking season for you guys. You know, heartbreaking season for the Cowboys. They had an absolute... St- I, you'd almost want to have a season that was not so dominant. Okay? Yeah, right. And then go into the playoffs with a little bit of question marks. Then to have that type of a dominant season only to get beat in the first round of the playoffs, that's like a serious punch in the face as far as I'm concerned because you're so confident based on what you've seen all season long. Right on. You know? Wait. So it, it, it would almost, like, like and, and you guys were in, a, Dallas, you also were in a bad spot yesterday of Green Bay had nothing to lose. Dallas had everything to lose. It was all on their backs. All the pressure was on the Cowboys. You were home. You had this great record all season. You had this offensive line that everybody and their mother talks about. You were supposed to, I mean, Green Bay comes limping in. No Jordy Nelson. Wasn't even supposed to make the playoffs. Went on this amazing run. Like, there was nothing really in Green Bay's favor on the road. Yeah, right. And 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 all the pressure was on the Cowboys. And I'm sorry, but I, I, I will say this. Des Bryant came to play. He did. Des Bryant a lo- came to play. A lot of fantasy points. And speaking of fantasy, guys, there is a new champion here. It pains me to say it, but Rizzy Riley scored almost 200 points yesterday, Dream. Okay. He had a fantasy lineup that was absolutely outstanding. Congratulations to him. Uh, Matt Ryan, Devontae Freeman, Deion Lewis, Des Bryant, who had 37 points. Randall Cobb, Julio Jones, Jared Cook, Taylor Gabriel, and the Patriots defense. What a lineup that was. Sick. And you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you. If you have a lineup in our contest, you're probably well served to put that in some other contests as well that pay big money because with 197 points brother i think you would have been in uh some pretty good shape i think you would have won at least a nickel in one of those in you know 27 dollar contests or something like that so you should definitely do it because i mean 197 points is really good and that was a uh, very close victory for him (sighs) dream i mean this this yeah like you said i mean it's a that's a tough way to lose it's almost kind of like the Cam Newton stuff and the Carolina Panthers last year being that dominant, you know? Not quite like Cam because Cam and them Cam and them ran through the playoffs. Yeah. Remember, Cam ran through the regular season and through the playoffs. Yeah. So not quite like Cam, but you know, it's just because it's the Cowboys. It was that you know that much more exaggerated. And I don't know, like you know, I know the Cowboys are saying to themselves, "Well, you know, we got the rookie, so we'll, we'll move forward next year's season." I hear all that. Okay, We're like, all right, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see what happens next season, y'all. <laughs> and please, you're gonna need a month before we really are gonna accept hearing any of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. And, and- Matter of fact, right now, just stay in hiding. Keep yourselves in the closet, under the covers, under the bed. Don't don't come out with no explanations because not none of them are really going to be listened to. Uh, <laughs> let 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 the people who told you that y'all wasn't that good give you give out the explanations as to why you lost because we do know what the explanations were and we saw it. Um, I think for the most part, the game, unfortunately, the Steeler game came after this game and. Th- I, I did like the timing of the games. Would have liked to see the Steeler game first, the Cowboy game second, though, because the Dallas game. Trying to watch Steelers Chiefs after watching the Cowboys Green Bay, oh. it was like it, it was like trauma. Oh, I know exactly. One more <laughs> one more note on the Dallas Cowboys and Green Bay game. Dream is that you know we talked about the offensive line getting away with a lot of holding all year long. And you know what? The refs weren't having it yesterday. I forgot about that. And yeah, I did talk. Yep, you're right. We did talk about the Dallas Cowboys offensive line getting hit with holding a lot. And I'm probably sure that Green Bay and your coaching staff probably cut up some film and sent it in and made the refs aware that some of this stuff goes on. And they got called for it in some bad situations yesterday. Big time. Big time. So Green Bay moves on. And they will go to Atlanta this week. And we'll talk about that game moving forward after we recap the second game, which dream, it was kind of ugly for a little while. We're talking about the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Steelers as they emerge over the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs, their playoff woes continue, dream. Well, we talked about Andy Reid and his playoff tenure. Yep. We talked about the Chiefs, just that average... Team, I you know the you know I I want to you want to root for the Chiefs and you want to like them, but like I said the, uh, during the show yesterday, 
a team that showcases the tight end as their, you know, most valuable weapon to me is problematic in the NFL. I mean, you're in a passing league, a league that gets the ball down the field. You need to have at least one dynamic wide receiver yeah. uh, and possibly, you know, a, you know, a good running back. And while their running back is good, but Alex Smith, you know, Alex Smith lost his job to Kaepernick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just let y'all know that. I mean, I don't know if, if, I, if I'm the only guy that remembers that. Alex Smith lost his job to Colin Kaepernick. And yet, people wanted to believe that Alex Smith would make it happen in this particular situation. And I'm sorry. Smith is an okay quarterback. Dude, that's not my guy. No, it's not. And you know what? I mean, you know, he's got the game management sh- stuff going on. But you know what, Dream? At the end of the day, this game was just a defensive struggle back and forth. I mean, complete opposite of the NFC. Well, I don't think it was a defensive struggle because the reason it was a defensive struggle is because Pittsburgh settled for field goals instead of getting touchdowns. Of course, and then they, they turned the ball over like on the two-yard line as well. If Pittsburgh goes out there and scores the touchdowns instead of field goals, this isn't a defensive struggle. This KC gets blown out. Yeah, right, exactly. Like in the first matchup. Right. I believe Pittsburgh was up like 21 nothing in the first quarter in the first matchup. Like 22 to something. Something yeah, crazy. Something, yeah, something agreed. crazy. And I just don't... um. You know, I, I don't, this this game, you know, I see Kelsey in here complaining about the two, the, the failed two-point conversion try, ripping the refs. And Kelsey, you know, like, you, you like his energy, but you got to just be real because, you know, that was a flag. I mean, the guy tackled Harrison. What do you want? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I can't, I mean and it, here's the other thing. By the way, guys, here's the other thing. Harrison is 38 years old. Yeah. Listen, I'm all for the old guys getting it done as I am an old guy myself. But I'm just saying, 38 years old wreaking havoc against the young bucks. Right on. And Dream, Le'Veon Bell, 170 yards on the day. And quiet, but it wasn't wasn't it quiet? It was that, so quiet. It was so quiet. I didn't 171, huh? 130 carries, 170 yards, 5.7 average per rush. That was such a quiet because I kept making fun and kept saying that, <laughs> that um, looking at Dr. Dizzle, uh, uh, talking about how he went undefeated this weekend. <laughs> well, damn, Dr. D- about time. <laughs> how about all the weekends you got murdered? <laughs> Fall back a little bit, player. <laughs> you was due. <laughs> all right, but uh, I, and, and you know what? We, we've been talking about this, and you and I, I mean, I am a big fan of Le'Veon Bell, and I, I kind of like the patient running style, but, you know, it, we, we talked about it, that that is not... <laughs> that is not like football etiquette for a running back. Football 101, fundamental football. When you start at Pee Wee's, they tell you to hit the hole with intensity. You're supposed to hit that hole as hard as you can, as fast as you can. Now, Le'Veon's style, it, it, I mean, it, it definitely works. It's, it's you know, kind of cool. It works kind of cool. The only thing was, and me, you and I talked about it yesterday, there were spots in that game had Le'Veon Bell hit the hole and hit the spot with some, you know, intensity, he probably busts out with a nice big run as opposed to you know getting set getting hit you know after two yards yeah good point you know that was that's the, that's the only thing i saw so maybe sometimes uh he uh, you know who am i to, to talk about this guy's job i'm like i'm not i'm nobody to even talk about his judgment i mean obviously he knows what he's doing and it's working for him but there was a couple of spots where you just kind of wanted to, there was about three spots in this game hat and i saw that if he had just taken off he, he, he probably would have been good. I mean, it would have been gone because it, it was there were some holes wide open that, but he kind of did that tiptoe and dance behind the line yep. and kind of missed the hole. I mean, just the fact that he just stops dead. Yeah. Completely. He just stands there and waits for something to develop. And you know what, Dream? No, None of us really point this out, but you got to tip your hat to the Pittsburgh offensive line. That offensive line is great. Not a lot of people give them a lot of credit. I mean, the fact that you have a running back that could stand still for a half a second is mind-boggling. I mean, that doesn't really happen. I mean, it, it, it's just amazing how he's able to do that. Yeah, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line deserves a little bit more credit than we, get, than we give them. The only thing about the Steelers is, 
I think the reason they don't get as much credit is because they didn't start off so incredible. I think as the season went on, the offensive line got better. And I also think that as defense is braced for the passing game, that also gave help the running game. And you know what, Pittsburgh, you're so worried about them murdering you over the top. Right. That, that you can't put eight in the box and try to concentrate on Le'Veon Bell. Like I said, you're, it's the double-edged sword offense that you, you can't – you've got to be balanced with them. Otherwise, you concentrate on one thing, you're getting beat with the other. You concentrate on the pass, they're going to run you to death. You concentrate on the run, they're going to pass you to death. So that presents a serious – you know, a serious dilemma for a lot of defenses attempting to cover this team. Right on, Dream. And the, and the best play in that game was the field goal first as far as the score. Because, I mean, that was your favorite game that you, you talked about that proposition with. Yes, I did. And it actually worked out twice yesterday. So it was pretty good, and that's plus money plays. Yes, I so. did. Plus money plays. And, you know, big ups to Hat for calling that out. Once again, big ups to Dr. Dan on the green. Now, I did say, to, if you tease Dallas... Because I did say to tease them, you had Dallas plus three, so you should have, you still should have, should have uh, pushed on yeah. that particular in that particular game. So, but big ups to Doctor Dan. I I did not see the over in that game at all. Dan called the over, which is absolutely phenomenal. I love giving out props to people who deserve props. And you know, I absolutely did not see. I, I did not think. I didn't think Green Bay could do it. I really didn't. I, I mean, I, I knew, I knew that they were capable of it, but I just felt there was just too much going against them, and I felt that the Cowboys would be able to control the game with their run game and their offensive line, and that just didn't happen. Right on. So you know, what? I also think Hat, that yes. week off really hurt the Cowboys. Well, they had the week off plus they had Week 17 where they kind of just threw whoever out there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's ba- basically been what three week, uh, three or four weeks since they actually Almost played a full throttle weeks. game. Yeah, yeah you know and they've been sitting doing interviews. You know, dad. You know, you know what I'm saying? My man dance up in the booth, yeah. visiting LeBron. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right on. That's that's why y'all catching so much steam on Twitter right now. And then not to mention the big mouth fans. Yep. Right on. And by the way, on Twitter, because when I talked about the Cowboys not being that good a few weeks ago, uh, many weeks ago, okay, many weeks ago. So, gang, anybody listening to this program, please, this is not about me yet and yesterday, all right? Understand, I talked about the Cowboys and their defense not being good and them not being as good as they are pretending to be weeks ago. Yes. And I got completely murdered by everybody and their mother on Twitter. I can't even remember the the the, the screen names of the cast that came at me is how many there was. <laughs> so yesterday I post my stuff. Only three cats really respond. Yep. Oh, we're here, Dream. Papa Bear, got to give him some props because he didn't run and hide. Uh, I think it's another guy, DJ Like 1000, and my man Buster Carr. Other than that... I ain't seen not one of them cats that was coming at me. <laughs> but but do understand, I am going through my timeline. I will find you. You will find them. Exactly. Find Good morning to everybody. We are the SBTV Nation, and we are breaking down some NFL, and we're looking forward to talking about the matchups as we have the opening lines for next week. And let's talk right about a Dream. Both games are on Sunday. They're going to be a 305 and a 640 game. And it's going to start off with the NFC Championship with the Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta is a minus four-point spread, that nasty four points, with an under-over Dream, 60. 60 hey, I, by the way, I got to take a pause for the cause. I've been so animated about the, the Dallas Cowboy loss that I have forgotten to talk about it's Martin Luther King Day, y'all. Yes, happy Martin Luther King Day. Happy too. Martin Luther King Day to everybody. Um, obviously, I don't need to go into all the dynamics that goes with that. But if you are not working today, if you're off, you know, uh, enjoy the day. If you are working, you know, I, I tell this to people all the time. If you're working, especially if you're African-American, don't be feeling mad because that's part of the dream. 
So Absolutely. that's a positive thing, not a negative thing. So don't take it as a negative. Um, but uh, if you're working, you know, congratulations. You're celebrating your own way. Um, obviously, a lot of things done, you know, to, to, to move forward and have Black America move forward in this country. We've come a seriously long way, especially having a Black president. Uh, in my opinion, the last eight years, I like I did not. I'm still still in shock that we did have a black president for eight years. Um, and that shows how far America has gone. But we still have a lot further to go as far as racial equal equality is concerned. Right on, Dream. So taking a look at this game here, under over 60 points, brother. And the Atlanta sure. Falcons are minus four points. Yeah, um, gang, I got to be honest with you. And I know this might not be popular. And I know everybody's probably ready to, you know, have A-Rod, you know, go right to the Super Bowl. However, I like Atlanta. Well, this is like an initial look. I mean, this is only it's Monday. We've got, we got six days to go. You might change your mind. Who knows? You're going to see some injuries, you know, maybe come to form here. Maybe Jordy Nelson comes back. Yep. For this game, Dream, we don't know anything yet. Obviously, this is in the Dome, so we have no weather to worry about coming up on Sunday. But, you know, Atlanta minus four, they're favored. They're favored to go to the Super Bowl, guys. So the way the picture is painted as far as the odds makers are concerned, they're looking at the Atlanta Falcons versus the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl this year as... Pittsburgh Steelers going into New England at 6.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And New England is a six-point favorite with an under over of 51 points. What are the Patriots going to do or dial up defensively to stop the three Bs, Dream? Well, the New England Patriots are going to have to make a lot of adjustments on offense, on defense. Yep. In my opinion. And they're going to have to try to pick what they're going to try to stop. Either it's going to be the pass or it's going to be the rush. I would think a coach like Belichick is probably going to concentrate on the rush and kind of let the pass go for a minute. But I would expect them to try to try to have somewhat of a balanced attack defensively. You know, this is the game that I'm more I, I don't this is the game that I need the week of studying for. Right on. Because, I, to be honest with you, right out of the gate, I do like the Pittsburgh Steelers. I talked about the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I talked weeks ago that I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers were the team that could beat the Patriots because of, because of their offense. And Pittsburgh's defense has been stepping up as of late as well. I am, I'm a little bit bothered by the Patriots, and I talked about it yesterday with... Tom Brady doesn't have his comfort zone with his receiving core. I believe that he believes in Edelman, and I don't think he has a lot of confidence in the other guys around him as he hasn't played a whole hell of a lot with all these guys. I mean, think about it. Bennett just came in this year. You know, he disappeared this week. You know, um, Michael Floyd just came in a few weeks ago, okay? Hogan on and off the field hurt and unhurt all season long. I mean, he hasn't had real comfort in knowing exactly where his guys would be. And this comfort level changes in the playoffs. During the regular season, I think it's, you know, you go out loosey-goosey and you throw to the open guy and it's different. Now in the playoffs, when you're so trying to make sure you don't make a mistake, you want to be sure that your guys, you know, are in tune with you and know what's going on. This is a big, this is a big point in this game uh, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, but of course, Bill and Brady, you know, been here before. It's not the first time that they played with, you know, a hodgepodge mix of guys. So if anybody can get this thing done and get it done right, it's obviously going to be them. Right on, but, Dream. But for me, I'm a little bit nervous about it. And that's that's the X factor for me, which is why I'm quite a leaning towards the Steelers. Going to require another week of work as far as I'm concerned, a few more days. I'll probably make up my decision, obviously, by eh, probably on Thursday. I'll have a decision uh, on which side I'm going. But I am right now leaning towards the Steelers because I just think... The Steelers have not really had an offensively breakout game yet. Right. Okay. And I am like ready for Big Ben to get up in the pocket and start throwing the ball down the field. And I believe that the, that the, that the Patriots are going to attempt to stop the run and Big Ben is going to have to come out and tear, you know, tear it up a little bit through the air. And, and I just think, I think that that receiving core, I think they're a little bit too much for the Patriots secondary. 
Yeah, I mean, and you know what, too? It, when you look at this, this is going to be a good chess match because the Patriots' rush defense is number three in all of the NFL. They only give up 88.6 yards per game on the ground. So it's going to be interesting trying to watch uh, Le'Veon Bell doing his uh, stutter steps and uh, his jump cuts and all that dream versus this Patriots' rush defense. So it's going to be pretty interesting. I, I think you're right. I think that, you know, it's going to force Big Ben to do some moves through the air. And uh, you might see a high score on a fair here. Moving on. Because the under over is 51 points. Probably not going to be as high scoring as the NFC game. But it might be pretty close. We might have some pretty exciting football on Sunday. And my thing with the NFC game is that unlike the Cowboys... I believe Atlanta can respond to Green Bay. So my my thing is with Green Bay, Green Bay came out and punched Dallas right in the mouth, you know, right out of the gate. To me, Atlanta, you know, they're going to welcome that. They, they ain't going to get shook. I mean, they didn't this week. Seattle came in, punched them right in the mouth, and they were like, all right, whatever, let's, we, okay, we give up touchdowns, so now it's our time to go get one. So I don't think that Atlanta will quite panic, kind of like, Dallas did, and, and I, I don't know if panic's the word, but I don't think Atlanta will feel frazzled at all, you know, if Green Bay comes out and goes right down the field and scores. And I know, but and I and I'm pretty sure that Atlanta can answer. And I just think, you know, and we, you and I talked about this before. I even talked about this on the phone, B Mac, yesterday. I said, you know, if Dallas got gets into a shootout with Green Bay, I, I like Green Bay. Yep. Okay. And if Green Bay gets into a shootout with Atlanta, I like Atlanta because yeah. to me, I know Green Bay's, you know, got Aaron Rodgers. I'll give you Aaron Rodgers definitely the nod over Matt Ryan, but it's not by a whole hell of a lot. Matty Ice can still get it done, you know, as well, you know, but I, Aaron Rodgers definitely the better of the two. I mean, if I had to make my pick, but then once you go to the receiving core and the running backs, you know, and you know, you get... A 90% Julio Jones, I'll, I'll take a 90. If it's under 90, then I don't want him in. But I'll, I'll take a 90% Julio Jones. Then I give the nod to the receiving core and the role players and the skill players of the Atlanta Falcons offensively over the Green Bay Packers, especially the running backs. Do we have the best four teams of the year left? In my opinion, yes. I think so, right? My opinion, well, I, you know, Green Bay. Especially second half. Well, second half of the year, probably, for sure. Green Bay, though, dude. I, I don't know. Well, because, no, if you go to go best team to the year, then you'd have to go to, you, you would, ex have, Green Bay would be the X factor. Because it should be Dallas. Well, you know what? Green Bay was winners of eight straight. Pittsburgh winners of nine straight. New England winners of eight straight. And Atlanta winners of five straight. So really no time off. Foot on the gas the entire way. Second half of the year, Dream. All four of these teams. But Dallas didn't lose. Dallas Dallas had like five straight, too. Yeah, well, they lost to Philadelphia in the last game, but they really didn't play anybody in right. the second half. So I, I want to, I, you know, like I said, I, I think that's the X factor. And I had I had Dallas playing Atlanta, and I had Atlanta beating Dallas. I, I did. That, that was my... That, that's what I thought was going to go down. I, I thought Atlanta would play Dallas. I thought Atlanta was capable of beating Dallas. I didn't. I didn't see Green Bay doing it. But um, right now I'm I'm pretty confident. I'm going to roll with Atlanta in this particular situation. I really like what I saw at Atlanta, and I don't. I think Green Bay style. See, what, the problem with Green Bay and Dallas was there were two different styles, yep. and you know whichever team. Was able to will their style, kind of was going to have the better of it, and it, 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 you know, Green Bay came out and did that. But with Atlanta, Atlanta's style and Green Bay's style seem to be very similar. So that's why, and, and like I said, I think Atlanta is a little bit more potent. So add that to them, plus being home, you know. Yeah, I got it. I understand. Well, you know what? I'll be doing my breakdown on Sunday. We'll have to have that conversation and see where it lands, Dream. So you know what? We got a lot of we got like six days to go here, guys. But you know what? Hey, looking forward to a very exciting Sunday of football. And you know what? I'm looking forward to just kind of chilling and watching several hours of football on Sunday. Too. You know, and to me, this last weekend, this is the, to me, this is the best. And gang, this is why the NFL is the NFL, too. I mean, you look at this, this, this weekend, it just passed. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, the matchups, the games, the passion. You go to the bar. Bar 
Bar's full, Cowboy fans on one side, Green Bay fans sprinkled in, there's yelling and screaming. I mean, that, yesterday, such a good time. It was. Such a good time. Just the passion, the fun, and this is why the NFL is what it is. You know, it kind of brings people together in a sense. You know, as long as it's positive and no, you know, no nonsense, you don't want none of that crap, but I'm just saying, you can, other sports, they, it, it, outside of a heavyweight boxing fight, you just don't have that kind of electricity around single games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't see that anywhere else. Like that Cowboy Packer game, that was, like I said, that's like an old Tyson, you know, Holyfield fight almost. That's what it had the feel of. Because you just don't get that kind of electricity. You know, other games, okay, well, there's a series. There's one to two games. You know, whatever else have you. Baseball, there's like no action. So, you know, okay, whatever. We'll catch that. <laughs> yeah, right on. You know, but with these games, you know, and this weekend that we had, uh, just a great weekend of sports. Everybody's able to pick a side. You sit down, you watch the game for a few hours, bring some family together or go out and hang out with your friends. You know, it was so good getting together with you yesterday. That was dope. Yep. Me and you had a ball. It, it, NFL, dude, that's why they got it going on. That's why they got it going on, Dream. So, anyway, let's move on from the NFL. Unless you got anything else football-wise. Don't have anything else football-wise, man. I'm 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 done. I just want to. I, I do want to talk some more about the Cowboys being booty, but I think I beat that to death already on the show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh man. All right. So let's uh, let's move on here, Dream, and let's have a conversation about the NBA as that is full throttle right now. And congratulations, great call on the Crafters yesterday to beat up on the Knicks. <laughs> That was a great call. I, I heard you say that, and my ears perked up when you said that. I was like, oh, that does sound pretty good. <laughs> so the Knickerbockers now got to play tonight. Actually, they're play, Dream, they're playing today. One yeah, they always play on Martin Luther King Day. Wow, there's a couple of games here during the day, guys. We have a 1 o'clock, a 2 o'clock, a 3.30, a 4, a 5, a 7.30, and 8, 9, 10.30. Wow, they're spread out Be all day careful long. careful if you murder, if you're going to murder the Hawks today. Because the Knicks are dual win. They're on a seriously bad losing streak. And they are dual win. I, I'm not calling it today, though. Because Atlanta's pretty Atlanta's pretty potent, especially regular season Atlanta. Yeah. But the Knicks are dual win. Let me look at the Knicks. What, what are they on? They've lost. They just won. All right, they're 2-8 right now in their last 10 games. 2-8 <laughs> half. Yeah, they beat the 76ers. <laughs> No, they did. <laughs> no, they they beat the 76ers on January 11th. Or no, yeah, I'm sorry. They they, no, they no, they they lost to the Sixers. They beat the Bulls. That's who they beat. They beat the Bulls and they won at Milwaukee. But you know, looking at this now, I mean, yeah, got Atlanta coming into town. There's no spread yet, Dream. I know because they can't get one high enough. <laughs> <laughs> About to get a college football spread. <laughs> so we got this game. Go this game, gang. If you guys are interested in this, my advice you was. If you're not going to play Atlanta, leave this game alone. I know it's Martin Luther King. I know the Knicks are home. But the Knicks are just a very dysfunctional team right now. Yeah, I do. I hear you with your dual win. If you want to get involved with that, if you want to play a game based on that, I kind of understand it a little bit. But I would just wait for an opponent a little bit less potent than the Hawks. Hawks play good basketball during regular season. Fundamentals are dead right. And they are getting some production out of Dwight Howard. So... I would just be careful if you're going to take the Knicks today because oh, I, I don't think it's a good spot. All right, Dream. Well, we got the game of the night. Yes. We got the rematch. The rematch. Of the NBA Finals. And we've got... I, thought you, I think you had a little trick up your sleeve when you went NBA. Go yeah, ahead. we got the Cleveland Cavaliers going into the Golden State Warriors. Golden State minus seven and a half. Under over of 226. Dream... I hate to say it. Yep. Golden State's winning tonight. I think they're going to beat my boy. Really? I do. I do. You put money on it? Ah, oh, man. You know what, though? <clears throat> it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to money line the Cavs, though. I mean, you're probably getting pretty decent odds there. Getting decent odds with the Cavs. You know, the thing, if, if the Cavs did not just add Corver <laughs> you know. to the roster, I might be right there with you. But... I don't know. The Cavs, man, son. 
Corbett's addition is mad dangerous, in my opinion. I, I'm really shook up about what the Cavs made happen right now because, dude, you I talked about it. LeBron brings the devil team to the inside, kicks that ball out to Corbett. Son, I know. he is going to be torching cats to death. I know, exactly. And a lot, and to me, a lot. I know, I know. You guys might like J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith's a streaky shooter. He is very inconsistent and streaky. Corver. Corver dials up the most methodical shots. That's what I'm saying, man. And just takes it like to perfection. I mean, he's one of the greatest of all time as far as three point shooting. Corver you know? is like one of them dupe white boys that stays out of the three point. Yeah, right. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you already know that. You know what I'm saying? Like one of them do white boys. You just hang out with the people. You know what I mean? Kick it out, just, just draining threes. And you're like, ah. Oh. Every time you look to the line, like, who's not covering him? Yeah, exactly, Dream. <laughs> <clears throat> so looking at this game, I, I really think that Golden State's going to beat him. I really do. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to take your lead on this because this is your boys. The Cavs are your boys, and you know them better than I do. I do think I do think that there will be a sense of urgency yes. for Golden State to try to win this game, especially at home. Especially at home. Exactly. I just hate Golden State's defense and their inside I presence, know. dude. It's just God. I know. And there is it's a like lot. It's like the Cowboys' defense. <laughs> right. It's like There's the Golden a... State defense and the Cowboys' defense is the same thing. There's a uh, money line trend here, man. Listen to this. There's on this board. I'm looking at 98 percent of the bets are on the Cavs money line tonight, Dream. 98 percent. That's just love. They just always try to get rich quick. They always try to murder a dog. <laughs> they love murdering a dog. Oh, yeah. I get. I know there's some Houston Texan tickets out there. <laughs> I know Caps was waiting all game to hit. You know what? I know that not only was there Houston Texans tickets, there were some Houston Texans who took the 16. Yeah, right. That remained quiet, but had they had the pass not covered, it would have been a dream. Right. <laughs> Look, on. I, I knew it. <laughs> right on, dream. All right. So, you have any other NBA up your sleeve? I don't have any other NBA up their sleeve, but another good game and another good matchup is going to be the Thunder against the Clippers. I like the NBA. The, I see the NBA decided, let's let's turn it up on Martin Luther King Day, the day after the playoffs, have a couple of real nice matchups set up. If, NBA, dude, it, I don't think they're ever really going to get what the NFL has because the NFL just, you know, that once a week and all that that's around it. But I got to be honest with you. I remember a few years ago, after Jordan had retired, the NBA, it seemed like it was on its way down. Sure. They have injected so much life into this NBA thing. And I I am going to give LeBron a a lot of credit for this because he's definitely a proponent. But what the NBA has done and embraced putting together some of these super teams and embraced manufacturing some of this excitement, dude... NBA has done an incredible marketing job. That Adam Silver guy, I'm telling you, he's supposed to be a genius. I got to think there's very few people who I'm, you know, you hear that genius tag thrown on guys all the time. You're like, yeah, all right. He's just a rich dude, got a cool position and was able to make some decisions. A lot of us think that. Like if I was the commissioner of the NBA, I could have made it dope too. This dude, I'm going to take my hat off and give him some props because I think he did a really great job in getting this thing back to the forefront and making the NBA the it factor or second place it factor as far as American sports is concerned because the NBA has done a stellar job with not only the games on Christmas to this game, these games now today's slate for ML, you know, Martin Luther King. And then after the Super Bowl, they go ham with their season. So great job by then. But Absolutely. back to what I was talking about. Oklahoma City Thunder tonight playing the Clippers. 10.30 start as well. Very interesting game. Thunder did play last night. They won. Oklahoma City Thunder. Played the Kings last night. Beat the Kings 122-118. to 118. Of course, Russell Westbrook. Ham, 36 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. You know, Doc Rivers got to tell us, guys, just go out there and, and, and cover Westbrook. Let everybody else do their thing. Yes, exactly. So what else you got, Dream, before we close out of here? All right, that's all we got there. NHL, guys, fell short. New Jersey Devils won yesterday. And you know me, I always keep it real, always tell the truth. But that was a sure spot. I thought that the Devils would lose. I don't know what happened against the Canucks, but the Devils were able to get it done yesterday and win a game. A little bit ticked off about that. That went down yesterday 
um, in the NHL. Let's go look at the lineup today and see what we got popping in the NHL today as we got seven games on tap. <sighs> Hang on a second. Right now. All right. And as I look, we have, I'm looking for the San Jose Sharks. And there they go against the Jets. Ooh, tough game. And you got a bunch of one o'clock games here too. One o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, seven and nine. Bunch of, bunch of tough games. Me, I don't like getting involved in competitive hockey games. I do see competitive hockey games on the rise. I would get involved with the Bruins if they didn't always smack me in the face, which they do. So I'm not getting involved with them. Uh, but the Bruins are playing the Islanders. The Bruins should probably beat the Islanders. I'm not getting involved. Bruins one of those teams I can't win with and I can't bet against. So I'm just leaving them alone. Right. Uh, but if you can, go ahead and get down with them. Okay, two matches that I do like. Definitely like the Montreal Canadiens playing the uh, Detroit Red Wings. Montreal has been very good this season. I've talked about them. I played them a little bit at the beginning of the season. Then kind of tailed off of them, you know, so far in the last few weeks. But uh, I have kept my eye on them, and they are still doing their thing. Um, I do like them tonight against the Red Wings. And obviously, my other game I'd love is the Edmonton Oilers playing the Coyotes. Edmonton is a 9 o'clock start. The Canadians is a 3 o'clock start. Edmonton's dope. Coyotes have been the Coyotes. Haven't changed much from last year to this, this season. You know, they, they aren't that great. Uh, that looks like a pretty solid parlay right there. If you don't want to take the Canadians because they're on the road, just take the Oilers and leave a spot open or money line parlay the Oilers with Golden State Warriors. There you go. All right, Dream. So that's going to do it for us. Happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody out there. And we are looking forward to a full slate of sports today. So what do you got to do to close out of here, Dream? Hey, one more time, I want to thank the Dallas Cowboys for providing us with a plethora of entertainment over the next yeah. week and a half or so. I don't think we'll stop talking about this. Maybe not until next season. <laughs> and Shy Picks, uh, good luck with your tennis, brother. Maybe we'll not try, try to talk about this till 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 uh until next season. Uh, SD Grind is in the house. Terrence Mack. We did boys is out there. Terry Bouchard is in the house as well. Sin City Maverick. Good to see you. Hope you help as well, brother. Sin City hit me up this morning. He's always behind the scenes uh, plugging this program and plugging it to many of the people that he's involved with. And can't thank you enough. You also put us in contact with Pamela Michelle um, and that that particular aspect that we run on the show as well. So can't thank you enough for your contributions. My boy C Rod, C Rodriguez Jr. is in the house. The K Man is out there as well. Shy Picks, thank you, sir, for your input. Uh Buster Carr is out there. Sir Mata, Urban. Er, what's going on, player? Good to see you. Super Mario to the bank. INT, the Cruck is out there. Vegas Jack, Bang the Book, Wooch GG, Rick Lopez, and of course the incomparable, the amazing, the evil genius of Major League Baseball. Dr. Dan is hitting us up from where he's at. Gang. Oh, Vegas Girl 92661. I see you out there too. Rick Lopez, what's up with to you? Buster Carr, I think I already said him. BT and Cash Act your best. Okay, I'm the dream. Always remember who you win. Make the most of each and every day because you cannot get this time back. Once again, in case you missed it, Edmonton Oilers at home. I think I'm going to ride with Hat and go in and take the Golden State Warriors. I think I'm going to do Edmonton and the Warriors in the money line par. That probably pays decent, close to even money. And maybe leave the Canadians out because they're on the road. But I do slightly like the Canadians. All That's right. where I'm at. Good All right. Luck. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, it pains me to do it, but I got to bet against my boy today. I believe that the Golden State Warriors will beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. And that will be the end of that. They got to win this game, Dre. And they lose this game in, in Golden State. You know it's going to be hell to pay. Well, if, any, if there was any time that they could lose, it would be right now because everybody's so focused on clowning on the Cowboys that they'll probably forget that they lost to them <laughs> twice. <laughs> right on, guys. We love you to death. Go out there, grab the world by the balls, and get that money. Let's go. Peace. <laughs>